Having seen standard secure MAC addresses in action, we're now going to work with dynamic addresses. Same MAC addresses, same IP addresses, everything is the same. And actually, we're picking up on the router and switch exactly where we were at the end of the last video. What we'll do here is quick shut. And then I'm going to take that one secure static MAC from the last lab and take that one off. So we're going to do a little verification here on top of that. And show port security, you can see on the port, one MAC secure address as we expect, that's our default. No current addresses, so it doesn't know anything right now. What happens if we don't configure a static address? How does the dynamic learning take place? Let's find out. Let's go ahead and do a conf t. Do a no shut there. And we'll go back and send the pings again. Let's see if we see any kind of violations or anything come up. It does take a few seconds, so you wouldn't see them immediately. But if we were going to see something, I think we'd see it by now. So let's go ahead and start verifying, because right now the only command we have on that port is switch port port security. That's it. We haven't changed the maximum addresses. We don't have a static address configured. No nothing. So let's do a show port security with the T and the Y in the correct order. And we see one change from just a few seconds ago, current address one. So this gives us a huge hint, or does tell us actually, hey, that port has learned an address, or it's gotten a secure address from somewhere. So we definitely suspect it's dynamically, but how can we prove that, and how can we see it? Let's run show port security interface fast 0 slash 1. And we see some more hints here. First off, we see port security enabled. We always like that. Port status is secure and up. And note here that the max MAC addresses set to 1, total MAC addresses set to 1, configured to 0. So we must have a dynamically learned address in there somewhere because the sticky MAC addresses, which I know we haven't gotten to yet, that's a 0 too. And we know this is the last source MAC address seen by that port, so we even know what the address is right now. But we need a little more verification. You remember a couple of videos back when I was telling you about port security and I said basically the switch keeps a list, you know, it's like the doorman at a club, you know, here's who can get in, here's who can't. Well, you might be thinking by now, hey, am I ever going to see that list? Well, I was saving this one for you because I know we have a lot of show port security commands in these labs. I don't want to hit you with all of them at one time. And you may already be thinking I thought he had hit us all with, at one time. This one is show port security address. And this is a great table to refer to because this is your secure MAC address table. This is the list the doorman has of who he's letting in that port and who he's not. And you can see from left to right the VLAN number of the secure MAC addresses, or in this case the secure MAC address. We have one and the type is secure dynamic. There it is. There's the word dynamic that we've been looking for. So to allow a port to learn an address dynamically, just leave the static ones off. That's all you have to do if you're only going to have one secure address. But what about a scenario where you wanted to mix them? You know, can we do that? Because sometimes in Cisco we get in trouble when we start mixing things. Can we have a port learn an address dynamically and also have a static entry on that same port? Hmm, can we do that? Let's go to conf t. We'll go to that port again. And I'm going to try to go all the way back to the MAC address that was obviously just wrong. There we go. I'll do a control A, get rid of the no. And I tried to add a secure MAC address right now. And you can see the message I got immediately. Total secure MAC addresses on interface fast 0 slash 1 has reached the maximum limit. And of course, we know that maximum limit is 1 by default. We also know how to change it. So let's do that thing. I tell you what we're going to do. We're actually going to shut the port down here for a moment. And this has another effect I want to share with you. Notice that dynamic entry is gone now. If you reset the port, that's going to get rid of the dynamic entries. 
So again, while we didn't see anything at a remaining age because we're not aging them out, they will leave the table if you close that port. So it's a good way to initialize the port, of course. So let's go back to FAST01 and let's look at our port security commands. And max is what we want here because we're going to change the maximum number of values. Again, a public service announcement, do not set 6,144 secure addresses unless you have a great reason to do so. We're going to go with three here because I think that's a pretty safe number. And now let's try that MAC address again, the static one. No problem. So right now let's run show port security. And I know the port isn't open yet, but notice the MAC secure address has already taken effect. We don't even have to open the port for that. It's set to three. Current address is one because it knows the one static address that we gave it. Let's take a look at show port security address. And you can see now the different secure configure. So this is a great command to go in and see not only, <clears throat> pardon me, what your secure MAC addresses are, but which ones are configured and which ones are dynamically learned. Now the question here is, and let's just take a quick look at the config. There we go, interface fast zero slash one. It's an access port, we know that. We enabled switch port port security with that fundamental command. Then we added one secure static address and changed the maximum overall value to three. So what's gonna happen when host one sends in some traffic with an address that does not match the static one, but it looks like it still has room to learn two more addresses? What's gonna happen? Let's find out. Okay, that line protocol is just coming up, so I might need to send some more pings, but we'll see. Let's do a show port security at this point, and we see current address is one, so let me go over and send that ping again. I probably did that a little early. We would expect that first one to age out. And there we go, so we've got maximum secure addresses three, current addresses is now at two. So let's just go back. I want to make sure that ping goes through. And there we go. That first time out worried me. But there you go. The first packet you can lose on occasion. So let's go back to 6 and run show port security, or the switch, I should say. And now we do see that current address is up to 2. So it seems, and we know now, that the port can have a static address or multiple static addresses configured on it, secure static addresses and still learn the next address dynamically or the next addresses as long as we left some room. So we allowed for three addresses configured, one statically, so that means the next two source MAC addresses that that port sees, it's going to learn dynamically as a secure MAC address. Now let's go to show port security address. And there you go. So no problem with dynamic and static secure MAC addresses living, living together on the same port. And actually this configuration again leaves one address because we're at a maximum of three, a current address of two. So it, you could configure another static on here and that would be fine. If it learned another dynamic address, if somebody just changed laptops and another uh, source address came in, it could learn that one as dynamic as well. So if you want to leave yourself some breathing room with learning addresses, that's how you do it. That is the end of this lab, but plenty of port security goodness coming up next.